It's actually a matchup that I was thinking about quite a bit because we knew, obviously, the matchup that was kind of coming into play this morning, or, well, it depends on uh, what time zone you're in. It's uh, 3 o'clock already by me, but kind of what we're looking at here is essentially I was thinking about this matchup thinking could Complexity actually possibly 2-0? I think Secret were more likely to take a 2-0, but generally speaking, it seemed relatively even Steven. Secret have been in their slump. Complexity have been on the rise finding new strats that work for them in new synergies as well. So I think overall, like, Complexity has really shown to play for this turn and Team Secret's still kind of in that sore spot. Team Secret can play to their full potential. I think they're going to wipe the floor with Complexity here, but that's not necessarily what we're going to see. We see a best of one between these two teams, a lot of tension, and like we've been talking about, this is going to be deciding third and fifth place for the group. This is going to decide who goes to upper bracket round one, who goes to lower bracket round one. So a really consequential decision to make here in the draft and going into the game, how they want to play this. Of course, first and foremost, we're going to see the Lone Druid and Wisp taken out here. Of course, Complexity do run that Wisp mm -hmm. very frequently with the Tiny when they get the opportunity, but no surprise at all when they get the chance. Team Secret first pick the Earth. They actually have two players that will run this, both in the support role and in the mid. Yeah, and uh, we saw that in the last game that these two ended up facing off against each other. We ran it, and then we also had the Eternal Envy Spectre. But it, to me, at least, the, this is really a contestion of, of play styles, too, where for Secret, it's very much often that they'll run uh, about as close to a 4 Protect 1 stride as you can in this patch, yeah. because I don't think you really can do it that effectively. The first game, they lost with, uh, with Eternal Envy on the Ember Spirit. The second game, they won with him on the Spectre. And honestly throughout that game it was looking in very close contention uh complexity were able to win the fights that they took and then secret were able to dodge away from those fights and find pickoffs and it was really close and it all came down to one big engagement uh and in the middle of that there had to be a pause which was a little bit crazy um so there there are moments like this where some people might be thinking that they have a, a complexity have a leg up at least in this particular matchup based off of their play style which is about finding those team fights and i will We'll say currently I think that they're four and O on faceless void uh, complexity are swindle has really gotten a handle on this hero he had one game where I think he ended up with 700 GPM in the offlane position it was absolutely ridiculous mm. uh, and with the invoker set up there also I mean faceless void what do you think about this hero are, are people trying to figure out starting to figure out how to play him right I, I hope so. I like. I mean, if you you and I were discussing this even before the Shanghai Major Qualifiers began. I thought this hero was going to be coming in big, and I think the Chinese series really figured this hero very effectively. I think the build is a little bit too rigid. Every single game they will build the Vladimir's uh, Black Agnes. I feel like you can probably have some wiggle room there and find some new uh, ways to, to optimize the hero, but. In general, the people are learning how to trade really well with the time walk on the off lane. They're uh, going for the iron talent they need to to build him up, and, and they are initiating really effectively with him. So overall, I think that the Void is in a much better spot than he was when people just had no idea what to do with this hero. But um, comparing it to the Lone Druid, you said the wreck is really good on the Faceless Void, but Lone Druid is still a very threatening pick that they, they have to go up against either in the off lane or, in, mm -hmm. of course, in the carry role. So the two, banning out the Void or Lone Druid. I actually respect Secret's decision to ban out the Lone Druid because, like you said, they're kind of going for Protect 1. Uh, ideally, they're trying to control the map with the door, and then 1 is just having space rated for him, but, but it's not always how it plays out. But uh, what I'm thinking is, between those two offlaners, Lone Droid puts out the most pressure directly. He's the one that comes online and gets these power spikes that start allowing complexity to push in. You don't want to go up against that. It's a very smart ban. But it is tapping into reserve time just to think about this next phase here. They, they've got a Volker Void. They know that Complexity are going to have a pretty strong mid to late game. And yet they have to rely on Envy in that role because that's that's the team secret strat. Yeah, definitely. No, I, I completely agree with you. And particularly that point about banning out the Lone Druid. Uh, it's worth noting that Complexity did choose sides. So Team Secret were able to take first pick. And because of that, like, in those games that they played just a couple of hours ago, every time that the team took the Lone Druid, whether it was Complexity or Team Secret, they won. Uh, in the second yeah. game, it was, you know, Eternal Envy there on the Spectre, and then Misery was playing the offlane Druid, and he was able to pick up a relatively decently timed Radiant. Uh, Eternal Envy went for the, the 
stats build with the defusal blade. Um, this this hero, it just feels so strong to me, uh, Lone Druid in the meta. And it, much like in the game that we just saw a couple of minutes ago with the EG, if you lose one team fight, all of a sudden your base is gone. The, the push is just so immense from him. So um, I really like that. The gyrocopter ban seems perfectly fine to me uh just taking out one of those solid safe lane heroes and specter also not going to be here in the pool so uh, neither team picking up their safe lane hero yet juggernaut sven a couple of those other ones are still in the loop um i, I feel like team secret with dazzle here have a, a nice combo for any of those physical damage he dealing heroes yeah, they have some good potential there, but I think that when you're coupling it with the Face of Void, although the Invoker does provide some good mid-range damage mm. with the magical and pure damage that he can expose to the enemy, I feel like you still want to get something that could really dump into the Chronosphere a little bit. The Chinese teams run Morphling quite a bit. I don't think that's really hit the West in a big way yet, but uh, you could still see the Ember Spirit coming into play here, even though you're up against Ember Spirit, and just uh, the, the ability to... Actually, deal damage during Chronosphere is very important. And this is actually going to come through here as hmm. a choice for complexity. This is going to help out their laning phase a lot. When the Earth jumps in, he's looking for a quick, easy kill and a hero that can't defend himself. But Visage, as early as level 2, is far from it. This guy's going to fight you. He's going to turn all that damage right back against you. It's, it's actually going to be a very strong opportunity for complexity to start building their own momentum and... Uh, could it even be a Drow Ranger? That's what strat? I was about I... to say. I was I was about to say that like you were talking about the the needing more heroes to be able to deal out that damage uh, from a range. I to me this seems like a perfect opportunity for Drow to be run with Chronosphere. You catch people in there and have any number of heroes being thrown in. That's going to be able to work. And even if they wanted to, honestly, like Vengeful Spirit, I was going to say is another option that they could run. So uh, this is gonna you know give them the opportunity to swap in and possibly keep her in, in, out of the way. Of fire but this looks like a perfect opportunity for drow yeah they have great saving tools now with the dazzle brave with the venge defensive swap later on you can get the eggs on that earth spirit and of course he can create a lot of survivability and uh pull allied heroes out of a bad spot so this is all designed around protecting eternal envy whatever carry he may end up going with but it's, it's going to be a tough one here. Vistas is going to deal a lot of damage. I guess the Ember Spirit is probably the go-to you consider because he's able to make that jump out of the Chrono uh, so easily. But, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm, I'm not 100% convinced one way or another. No, at least now that Weeha is going to be taking the Earth Spirit to the mid lane. This is going to dazzle and avenge as the supports. Or it's not going to be an Eternal Envy, I can assure yeah. you of this. So we are going to be seeing mid Earth Spirit. That means we're looking for Misery's pick, and we're going to be looking for that MV. got to say Earth Spirit. Uh, hero remember you mean sorry. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. yeah no definitely we're gonna get all the spirits up in here um dazzle <laughs> is gonna be the lone person not ethereal and uh i i, I like that pick a lot tusk is the next one mm -hmm. i feel like this is just very well set up to be a drow game of complexity wanted to take it but if they do end up going over for the ember do you think that that's enough of a, an ability like do you think that complexity are going to be able to keep him off of the drow if they do got to go for that strategy mm -hmm. whoa okay okay well here it is terror blade with negative armor times two the weave wave of terror along with that terror blade i feel like there's some really good potential here uh he has to take up though really early on this he's either going to be depending heavily on the dow and the venge or eternal envy is going to have to build some good just raw hp items because even like a sun strike coming up from the invoker mm -hmm. is something that really threatens terror blade he has massive base armor but a terrible base hp pool so we're going to see envy uh, kind of build all around defensive maybe get a drum or something just pads his stat pool so that he can survive while still farming well and this is something that i'm curious about at this point where do you go for invoker? do you want to go quas wex you don't want to go quas x or either one looks great i mean you've either got the ability to drain the man out of all of these heroes that are incredibly spell reliant or you've got the capabilities to with one simple tusk rotation of a snowball into ice shards walrus punch sun strike kill somebody like there's just it's so easy to find a kill on these squishy heroes um is, is there a particular build that you like more here out of this invoker pick Definitely exhort. I think there's a lot of to be said about the fact that the invoker damage output will fuel the Vista's soul assumptions. When you're putting out meteor damage really quickly, the, the team fight gets 
in your favor rapidly with that damage out, and the Visage can follow through nicely with that. The Sun Strike is a clear thing with the Faceless Void, and just honestly, the time dilation is going to do enough control the spell casting the secret. I would say if Void is playing it correctly. So all in all, I think Inv Invoker definitely should be looking forward. The Exhort maybe could look at Forge Spirits, so they could maybe look towards Roshan a little bit early. Between the familiars and the Forge mm. Spirits, they can they can do some good work there. Even the, the Sigil can help out. But so last... how do you think Complexity are going to lean this with this last pick, Lena? All right. So it is going to be kind of shifting up the, the roles a little bit here. Uh, carry Void is actually a possibility. And I'm curious to see if that's actually something that Complexity have been practicing. Huh. Very, very interesting. Yeah, it, it, Olymp is going to be picking up the Lena. Lena. Um, and we're still waiting yeah. on everybody else to send out. But honestly, I mean, this is a team that feels a very comfortable switching around the roles. Oftentimes, Limp and Chessy will switch it up depending upon who wants to play what. Uh, Swindles does have a history of playing in the mid roles. He's certainly okay. not going to be taking that faceless void there, but has had some experience playing carry as well. Oh. Um, I, I don't know. This is a, a very odd collection of a draft, and we'll just have to wait till we get into it. But no. misery. I, I'm pretty sure right now we're, we're going to safe lane invoker and mid yeah. Lena, and then we're going to be looking at the off lane void. It just it, it clicks a lot better. Okay. I'm a little less sold on the Vistage supporting the invoker because like cold snap, grave chill. It's like it's okay, but it's not going to do that much to the dark. Here, misery is still going to get a lot of that lane, but in the that top lane will be. A bit of a wash, but if Z-Freak roams well, they might be able to kill the Earth Spirit a couple times, so mm -hmm. all in all, I, I think this is probably one of the better ways to, to form things up. We're on over into the game now. Final one here. Nobody is going to be eliminated today, but if they do end up winning this game, whoever does is going to be in the upper bracket, and the other one is going to be designated to the lower bracket early. Smoke coming out here. Swindles uh, is going to be playing your Faceless Void. We do have Chessy on the Invoker. Z Freak is going to be playing the Tusk. Limp is the Lena, and last but not least, Handskin on the Visage. Uh, and they're all going to be going down towards this bottom lane here. So, looking over the side of Secret, of course, we've got the Captain Puppy uh, running on the Dazzle. Weeha is going to be taking the Earth Spirit. That's going to leave Misery on the Darkseer. Envy is on this Terrorblade, and Belodai leading the charge here. He's the boots for a Spential Spirit. You know, I was wondering for a second there if they were going to, Complex, they were going to do something uh, with their last pick to potentially go for a level one Roche. They're kind of uh, becoming a bit notorious for it. They were able to pull it off earlier on in the uh, tournament, but mm -hmm. not going to be happening this time around. And it looks like we're probably just going to be seeing the rune swap. Haven't seen any wards placed down on the side of Secret as of yet. They're uh, holding on to those instead of opting to try and just make sure they have control over this entire area and probably going to be seeing Swindles head off on his lonesome over towards that bottom lane. Alrighty, so here Chessy going to be making his move with Exor. Probably going to just try to clear our Iron Shells, but actually take a note of where Secret are moving Misery right now. He is going to his safe lane position. Uh, damage over time is something that's really good against Faceless Void and the new Time Walk, so hmm. if he could just double Iron Shell, frustrate this wood quite considerably. Swindles, he'll still get something out of the lane, thanks to Z-Freak pulling things back, but it's definitely not the matchup that he's looking for, and we'll uh -oh, see we much start. more aggression come out, and they're on the high ground. This could really be for Chessy. Heal bomb as well. A couple more right clicks might be enough to get Grave Chill. They are going to be able to kill him off. First blood going to the Dazzle and Handskin. Also going to get chased down now. We have the Clarity up. Going to have to break it, but then that's going to leave him a little bit more vulnerable to these right clicks. Once uphill was very important, but we do have another Magic Missile, and it doesn't even matter. They're going to get one last shot and two kills off the back. Secret doing what they need to do. Really good recognition there by Pilot Diane Puppy that they were going to be moving up that mountain. Yeah, and just, of course, heading them off, but also just this entire landing configuration, where, it generally speaking, oh, they're going to go in again, this time with the Metamorphosis, Chessy doesn't really have much to keep himself alive, other than some tree jukes, and he'll have to just stay very, very reserved at this point in time. Z-Freak's going to rotate in, but 
He already skilled Ice Shard, so he's gonna really have to wait till level 2 before he gets to contribute. And I feel like the fact that Secret are shaking this up, that they're putting Envy in an aggro tri lane, which is something that's relatively uncharacteristic for them. They, they've done it before, of course, but generally speaking, they're, they're happier to throw Misery to the Wolves and give Envy the secured farm. In this mm -hmm. case, they're, they're shaking it up, and Complexity don't seem to have a great lineup to answer it. Yeah, absolutely, and maybe playing a little bit into the expectations of they just played a several games together, and you know they were able to watch those replays probably to some extent, or at least somebody was. Oh, but meanwhile, Envy is going to end up getting caught here in the shards, blocked off as well by Z Freak, is just going to get harassed out of there. But he's got a decent amount of sustainability in lane with Puppy on that dazzle. But what I was mm. saying is that, you, you know, when we were coming into this cast, we were talking about what we were expecting out of Secret, and they have a very distinctive style. The fact that they've switched it up, you got to admire that a little bit. Yeah, they know this best of one has to count. I mean, this is the same value of a best of three against one of the group A teams, so he definitely, they definitely want to make sure that it counts and that they're able to take complexity here where, where they failed earlier today. We're actually going to see a combo here onto mid. Weeha, he's the most spells, has smoked up for the... 2v1 play. Limp does get the fairy fire. He needs to heal himself as well, and that's going to be enough to keep him alive. Really well played there. Just Limp pushing that to the absolute limit. He did get ganked and was almost able to get killed, but not quite there in time. The uh, courier also bringing him out. I think that was the south that the courier brought him. Oh, goodness gracious, a little bit of Kale going on, and uh, the side pull is going to be somewhat effective, although not getting everybody. It's going to be able to possibly deny a couple of these creeps. But so far with this aggressive trialing, what are your thoughts? Do you think that this is working out for them, uh, this, despite the early kills that were uh, somewhat flukish? Oh god, Puppy's going to get jumped on again. Snowball is going to go out. Still staying alive with that boot advantage, but it's going to get grave chilled. Another creep is also following him. Uh, Soul Assumption, is he actually going to be able to walk out of this one? No, shards are going to come in. Meanwhile, we trying to run over to the other side. He is going to end up falling, and it looks like Pylai died. He'd end up dying as well. Invoker's rotating. Four heroes over here, but the stun is going to Keep him alive. He says, not my support. Continue on. <laughs> so, for now, at least, Complexity have only been able to acquire the, the one kill here on the Vintage. Soul Assumption, level one. It's definitely something to be worried about to an extent, but it still costs a lot of mana for Hanskin. So, in general, as it flies out, uh, it's going to be still hard on Puppy, I think. That's the big thing. Is <sighs> if he's really good with the oh. heal, with the group. He can keep Envy up through all this damage, and, and they can actually turn the engagements pretty heavily. But as the levels continue to grow for the Tusk, this, they're going to be able to really put out a threatening presence. I'm not sure what exactly happened in that last little engagement there, but I believe that Tusk got sniped by the Earth Spirit as he was going to either jungle or try to deny himself to neutrals or something. Uh, he was able to kill him off with just one boulder smash. Really, really well played there, but it did end up revealing that there's a ward that hasn't as of yet been dewarded. Um, really good play. Light Strike Ray not going to connect. They do have the Soul and Sun coming through. It's not going to be there. Meanwhile, the Magic Missile onto Z Freak. Double stun. Yet wow. Again, with it, a little bit of trouble. What a player. Rolling Boulder away, too. So Z Freak is not going to be able to kill him off. I don't know if Pylai Dai is going to be able to find this kill. She does have another Magic Missile in a little bit. They still need about 15 more mana, and they're going to continue the chase on forward. Already a 600 gold swing does style, but he's going to have to run through the tower. Uh, is going to get stunned up in the end. The heal bomb does come through snowball to keep himself alive we is going to turn back around because the rolling boulder is not going to be able to be enough and there's the wave of terror should be able to finish him off with one last boulder smash very well Ooh. done here we are showing why this is a first pick material hero for him and as uh, showing it once again i was surprised they even let it through him the the especially the ban order from complexity what they ended up doing was banning the bat rider and then the chen if they ban the chen and then the bat rider is a little different because you don't have to worry about that lone druid being left in the pool but essentially it's just like yeah, they, they even Lone was left in the pool, I still think Secret would have probably looked first pick the Earth Spirit, just mm. because of how Weeha is able to execute on the hero, especially as we see him now. So this is a hero that I feel like sometimes does end up running into trouble in the mid game, sort of run out of firepower. Do you think that that's true with him as a player, or is it more that you're able to get caught up with uh, with Spectre, or not Spectre, uh, Eternal Envy? Oh, meanwhile, Hanskin is actually going to get jumped on here again. He does get the extra moves to be the body blocks as well. There's going to be the Magnetized thrown out one time, a two-person yet again, and then silence him for good measure. 
Yeah, just perfect execution for Weeha. It does obviously use all the stone remnants, so he'll have to tone it down for uh, about Sun a minute here. He's bottom with the Kronos. That's going to be a kill into Misery. Swindle gets it. Yeah. That'll pretty much break up the equal lane there. Essentially, it's been kind of back and forth here. Dexter getting a little bit better in terms of the last hits, of course, with the Iron Shell. He's up 37 and 3 compared to the boys 25 and 9, but Swindle has, has maintained his position here, and it's not been too bad for him. So, yeah, overall, I think that this is. It, this is definitely he has time to strike, where he once he gets his stone remnants back up, then he's able to start being more active, being mobile, being involved, and finding kills. It looks like he actually wants to kill the Invoker pretty soon, because he just got dust, which, of hmm. course, you always want to have that as a gank-oriented hero, but right. to pick it up at this particular moment means, hey, we're going to be starting to disrupt the, the laning up top. So, uh, the normal build for Weeha, he's usually able to rush out a Veil of Discord. While hmm. it's really good on the Earth Spirit, it's not particularly stunning this game. I mean, you've got the Dark Seer spells that do a little bit of magic damage, the Magic Missile, and that's about it. Yeah, they're really the rest of it's very physically oriented. Um, reflection also doesn't really do a whole heck of a lot beyond the right clicks that come in from those illusions. Uh, I do you think then he tries to switch up his play to do something else? Or oh god, Sunstrike puppy not gonna get hit by that, but Z's freak is gonna end up forcing him away. Um, or rather, he's going to force himself away, walks away from that one. I thought that they were going to try and go for that, but I guess Weeha is going to initiate from a long range away. <laughs> yeah, I suppose that'll, that'll work out for him. But yeah, I'm not too sure. I feel like he's still the mana item on the Earth Spirit. So whether it's an Aether Lens or no, he's got the Null Talisman. He's still going for the Veil. So okay. he just feels confident that he's going to be able to do enough magical damage himself to make sure that that's relevant. Which means he needs to at least refresh his magnetize twice in my mind okay well that's a definitely a tall order it's not the worst if you're able to have a lot of those remnants up and available and uh, make sure that you make the land where you need them to i think the big thing for me that i'm looking out for is how are they going to try and control him? They don't really feel like they have a whole heck of a lot outside. Like, the majority of it is slows. Uh, Cold Snap is pretty great for being able to make that happen, but Rolling Boulder is always going to be something that's really difficult to deal with as far mm -hmm. as uh, an anti-ganking tool that he has. And even scary is the fact that every spell you put into the Earth Spirit trying to pin him down is a spell you don't get to use against Eternal Aid. And the right. Terror Blade, if he's involved in the fight in Metamorphosis, if you can't stun lock him, he's going to be able to get a Sunder off, and he's going to just be able to tear your entire team apart. So as scary as Weeha's Earth Spirit is, it's the fact that he's not the only threat on the battlefield that makes it that much more difficult to deal with. Hmm. Absolutely. Well, they're wrapping around, seeing if can maybe uh, make something happen up here with Swindles, but they're not really, they're kind of just walking around. I think their smoke ended up breaking, so because of that, they're going to have to back on out. As for now, Limp going to try and catch back up a little bit in net worth. Terrorblade, he's been pretty much free to get whatever he wants so far up in the top lane, and you know, when we, we've seen what can happen if you let a Terrorblade free farm, he's one of those heroes that just snowballs completely and totally out of control. Uh, I feel like this hero hasn't changed a lot outside of that reflection, um, the the big change that ended up coming. What do you think it is that's brought him back into sort of prevalence? Uh, well, of course, it's one big aspect is just the ability to farm up items without being crushed. The, the tempo of the metagame in general is favoring these cores that come online a little bit later. As much as people like to talk about the current meta being like death ball push, I really don't think that that's accurate in, in any way. I think that the push is a means to an end and that end is map control. You dominate the map, you control the resources on the map and then you get the better carry, more farm. And so Eternal Envy just wants to fill the role of that better carry. Uh, players like Silar on LGD of course are able to do just the same and it just comes down to the, the player. It's it's less about the the hero in the patch, and it's much more about the player in the hero. And I feel like Envy definitely fits the role that is necessary to really maximize the potential of Terra Blade. And uh, like saying, like reflection was his buff, but not even scaling the reflection. It's not coming right. into play whatsoever. Yeah, that's the big thing is that I feel like it, I guess then it, it really does have to be one of those meta changes opposed to the, the hero changes. The snowball forward is going to be able to catch here onto Earth Spirit, but immediately uh, he rolls away at a little bit more an effective pace. <laughs> He's going to be able to avoid that gank, and suddenly all that time that you saw Limp as well as Z-Freak sitting in the jungle doesn't really end up coming out too much. While Secret is going to be pushing up this top tier 1 tower, it looks like it's soon to fall. They did cancel a TP there. 
and bring in another one. So this is going to be Void. Uh, he needs to be careful here. Jump Lord Chronosphere ends up getting hit. Oh. stunned actually, but he's not going to be able to do enough damage. They throw on out the Meatball. It's going to be able to be there, but the swap out is going to keep him alive. Time Dilation is still in full effect, but they're not really able to take him down right now. He's looking for the Sunder. Ends up getting the Shallow Grave, but he needs to be careful lest he get killed off. We had dropped him pretty low after the Laguna Blade. Ends up using the Wand Charge to try and stay alive. Sunstrike is going to come in, able to take on out the Dazzle on the other side of the fight. We still sitting there with a very low HP pool. Would have died to that Dragon Slave, but is going to be able to TP out. Final tally is a tower for a Dazzle. Take it every day. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and that was a very conscious decision from Puppy there. Not to Sun Strike, obviously, but uh, essentially he goes. they go for the Grave Blade. They try to commit with the Terror Blade and get a big Sunder off. Obviously, the Grave Sunder is what we've seen a lot in pubs. But in this case, because he couldn't close distance, Envy turns around and Sunders the Dazzle down to minimum <laughs> HP. And then he nice. has to, uh, unfortunately, eat the Sun Strike, uh, which was well placed by Chessie there. So all in all, just... Uh, a tough exchange, but again, they get the tower, they get what they need, and they're going to continue to build momentum if they can just take the mid-tier one as well. Right. Well, and Envy continuing to level on up and get these the net worth higher and higher. You take a look, the three cores for Secret are in a fairly commanding position, and still the difference in terms of team net worth is only about 2,500 gold. It, it definitely feels like they're in a position to continue this pressure, as you were saying. Key items that have been able to be completed. We do have the Invoker who's gone for that point in Wex after taking three in Quas and three in Exort, uh, and he is going to be able to hick up that Hand of Midas, so the levels should be coming a little bit quicker very soon, and he's going to have that double Forge Spirits in just a couple of minutes. Yeah. So at this point, uh, Envy is farming a lot of camps at once, is able to kind of like keep the jungle on lockdown, continue to rotate through every time it's spawning, scaling, and he's getting some good value out of it. But we will see Swindles try to get involved in that process as well. I feel like they need a ward out this direction. If you look at the current wards from Galaxy, one that expire in mid uh, on the river, and then one was just placed on the top rune. They really need coverage in the secret jungle if they're going to be able to start testing the the vulnerable positions for secret yeah definitely and uh, like it sort of harkens back to what you're talking about their map control has been able to be sort of taken over and realizing that that might be something that's important they're going to move on into roshan with those double forge spirits and invoker alacrity up it's going to be time to strike they're going to be taking this out and this one is a pretty sneaky rosh uh, mm -hmm. i would not be expecting this if i was secret at this point do you think that there's any chance that they come over and realize this is going on I mean, they don't have really great scouting tools that the wave of error is not going to be coming to play, so no, I don't really think so. They, they'll they ping in that direction, they'll think it's possible, but if they actually go in, man, they would have amazing game sense if that was the case. For now, covering the bottom rune, they see Alina, I don't think they're suspicious at all. Well, and also complexity is sitting around this, uh, farming and, t and making things happen, but uh, in the earshot, sort of, if you will, they're they're capable sure. of being able to to top on in and lay down that chronosphere if at all possible. Uh, Chessy actually has to wait for his second forge spirit. This is taking a while. They might realize mm -hmm. something is up as this tier two tower or tier one tower is going to end up falling. Nobody is showing up for it at this point. A couple smashes. This is scary for complexity at this point. Yeah, but they've committed so hard for this, so they have to finish it. And I do believe that Secret might be getting too suspicious at this point, and it might be making their way there. They've only got about 10 seconds left on the clock for Roche, and it looks like they're going to be able to get away with it here. Jump again, the familiar is going to help out that last little bit of damage, and she will claim that he just and. Very nicely done, and it pays off, you know, you, you get yourself a really big objective, you build back up a little bit more of that worth, and now Void is starting to become a little bit something scary again. He's already picked up his Vlads, so giving his team that extra bit of armor and the lifesteal, very, very important, and maybe now they're going to be able to claim a tier 1 tower of their own. Yeah, so definitely need that kind of momentum if they're going to be able to really dig their way into this game. Right now, if you look at the top four net worth, that's three heroes for secret side, and, oh, and one of them is Nymph Terrorblade. So He's massive. He's going to go down up top. Yeah, they. I mean, they just spotted him walking through the junk or through the river with the one ward, and instantly he's dead with that veil finished off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not really much hope, but the Gravekeeper's Cloak going away so quickly to heroes like that, suddenly you're sitting at the lowest base magic resistance of any hero, and there's just really no way to survive against any of the significant spells coming in from Weeha. 
So we mentioned at the very start of the draft, well, not the very start of it, but we mentioned in the draft that we thought the Visage pick might have been because of the potential for a Drow pick. Sure. What do you think about this hero now? Is this is this paying off for them? Obviously, he just died, so it's a, a little bit of not a fair thing to talk about there because you know that could happen to almost any hero if they got caught out by Earth Spirit and Terror Blade. But it does kind of feel like maybe that it's something a little bit clunky in their draft. Do you agree? I feel like it's something that gets more strength and more value when you actually get the Visage near a Chronosphere. When you hit okay. the Chronosphere, you get drop a Luger Blade and a Soul Assumption, you just have a dead hero. But we're going to see double yules come out here on the Air Spirit. It is going to follow up. We have a combo Dazzle with the very preemptive grade. But can they get one more Soul Assumption? No! It's going to follow and it's going to kill. Invoker gets it with the Forge Spirit hit. Looks like Huppy is going to fall in as well as Visage takes another one. Hands can immediately prove that this was the correct pick. And Pile Die, he might get caught out here. We do have the Chronosphere still up for Swindles, and he might just think about it. They have the vision right now, looking for the possibility. He jumps forward. Oh, he wants to Chrono, but is going to hold back at least for the moment and instead content himself to take a little bit of farm and keep the pressure up on this Tier 1 tower, which, by the way, is still standing. Not for long. We'll see the, the Visage take care of it pretty quickly here. Has three birds to lend in the next fight, and uh, they have that Chronosphere. The Luna Blade cooling down, the Mana Regen on Limp. I feel like they're going to keep on... Just keep, while they're here, they might as well get free hidden. Yeah. Well, I'm thinking about it. They do still have the Blink coming out on Swindles. So they could be waiting I think, for a reinitiation with that. Yeah, they're going to fake back, I think. They, they don't actually have to retreat from this position, so they'll kind of control this part of the map. They'll find a safe place maybe to smoke up. And they are not really actually going to leave the Radiant side because there's actually no incentive to it whatsoever. Secret it, are getting a lot of farm right now. Complexity are in fighting form, especially with that Blink Dagger coming out for the Void. And he's even look at the Courier movement. They're trying to keep it sub. They don't know exactly where the wards are. And they, don't, they have not revealed the Blink Dagger until just then. And even then, he's only there for a second. So it's yeah. very unlikely they know about the Blink Dagger, and they are, are trying to get back into this game. Oh, they're going to swap back out Chessie. He's silenced up. They get the Magic Missile as well. So Aegis, first time going down, but the Blink is going to be up as well as Chrono. Envy up on the high ground and Puppy. They throw out the Deafening Blast, looking for the big Chrono. It hits on it too, but nice. that wasn't able to be enough. It's going to be doing so much damage. Envy ran into it too in the end. They get the Laguna Blade out, and all of a sudden, everybody's going to go down. Only person left alive is going to be the Rolling Boulder coming on in. We is it enough damage? They get a nice Thunder. I don't know if they're going to be able to do it. Stuns continue to fly. He is going to end up going down, and the Magnetize is doing a decent chunk, but I'm not sure if it's going to be enough. Earth Spirit was able to kill off the Lina. He's getting the time dilation out, a couple of right clicks, and the stuns, possibly a sun strike. It is not going to hit, but a ton of damage. This guy is so tanky, is still going to fall. Full man team wipe, 8 to 10 mm -hmm. is the current score. The complexity took a big one. That's the fight they're looking for. The Blink Dagger didn't actually give him the direct initiation, but it, but it got him to the fight, even though he was going to be pretty sneaky about it. So they got an amazing Chronosphere on the flank, and it hit on all three heroes wanted to hit on. Hit on the Venge and the Dazzle, which are two heroes that save those that are in Chronospheres, and then it also hit on the Terra Blade, keeping them out of the fight for an extended period of time. Now, there was a really cool Sunder magnetized combo that actually killed off the Lina, but using the two heroes for that purpose, it's, it's not anything to to be happy about right now complexity are starting to take control of the map off of just one single engagement Ooh, pilot die saving puppy at least for the moment and a couple of weird particle effects are going on right now yeah. with the urn. It does look like the sun strike isn't quite going to hit, but they actually catch Puppy in this. He might end up going down potentially. We do have the stun coming in. Hands getting in a little bit of trouble. It's going to oh, get jumped oh. on by Weeha. The Blade Fury has already been popped in. It looks like they're going to opt to try and kill off these birds. Almost going to be able to get them. They got one. But Earth Spirit getting a pretty nice pick there. Yeah. One of my favorite things about what Complexity were just able to pull off, though, is the fact that they didn't even smoke for it. They had an idea of where the enemy wards were, and they were able to just stay in the fog with the critical heroes that were getting caught out. Twindles actually silenced and stunned, eating the, the magnetized, but it doesn't seem like anything that Swindles has to be worried about here. Yeah, they just don't have the ability to, like, burst down super quickly and and keep the silence going, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's so hard to make that happen. All right, Chessie, they jump forward, Sunstrike. Oh, that silence from Wee! Oh, oh incredible! Swiddle's now dropping down. They get the kill on the <laughs> Void. That is all Wee all day. What a gorgeous response.
That was really well played. And you saw there, Complexity had really great intentions for what they were going to be going for. It would have been an immediate chrono onto two with, you know, the Invoker coming up right behind them. They definitely could have been able to kill off both of those heroes and uh, just great responses, as you said. My goodness, mm -hmm. his Earth Spirit play is off the chain. So good. It really is just, it's keeping them in the game for sure. I mean, we haven't really seen the Eternal Envy Terabit come into play just yet. He's getting there, but it's still going to take some time. So as a result, I am definitely keeping this all eyes on Weeha to, to continue to create the space and build that opportunity. This is what LGD does. This is They find ways to make the fights happen in the smaller skirmishes favoring their side. They, they go in at three, they go in as four, and they still win fight after fight. Well... Secret aren't dominating by any stretch. It's an even kill score of 10 to 10. But if you look at the net worth, we're seeing that on the dire side, it's an invoker at the 10k net worth benchmark. And on the other side, it's a Terrorblade. And obviously, mm -hmm. one scales a lot harder than the other. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and eventually, you're going to be able to pick up something like a BKB, possibly, to be able to nullify a lot of the damage they end up doing. Terrorblade does already have a Sanjin Yasha and an Ogre Club. Uh, what are you thinking this is going to build into? Do you think that there's a chance that he ends up going for this early of a BKB, or is this going to be something else here? It's definitely an Aghanim Scepter. <laughs> no, uh, there's no, there has to be a BKB. There's absolutely no other alternative. Yeah. It seems like that's definitely going to be the case, is the armor is going to get thrown out there. I do like the idea of the axe, though. Um, it seems like it would definitely be unexpected. Um, <laughs> Surprise <laughs> factor. Exactly. Above all else. It's mind games. Uh, as we see the Visage, as well as the Tusk and the Invoker, moving on up towards the top lane. All eyes are converging on this Tier 1 tower for the Radiant. And the BKB picked up. Maybe Secret mm. are thinking about trying to go for a fight here. Could be difficult though. Contest. One blink dodge and everything just is torn apart. Like there's gonna be the Yules to set it up. Ooh. Goodness gracious, the grave though, keeping him alive. I don't know how long it's gonna go. The vacuum wall oh, we have both of its spells. Meanwhile, the turn back around, they're able to drop the meatball. Chronosphere on the back lines, puppy's in a lot of trouble. They are still able to kill off Wii at the end, and they're gonna be able to take a little bit more as the dazzle falls in return. Do they get the walrus punch kill on a pile I die? He is gonna end up going down. And my goodness gracious, complexity, their five man is pretty strong. Absolutely, they're just engaging these fights really well. The Yules uh, to keep the Dark Syrian lockdown, forcing all the defensive response from Secret. And yeah, they don't kill the Dark Syrian. They take everybody that's behind them though. And I feel like Weeha misread that situation entirely. Like when they're jumping a Dark Seer on the tower, it is not just two heroes going for a quick pick, uh, a simple Lena combo. That is the entire complexity lineup ready to rock and roll. And he just did not see that Chronosphere coming. Yeah, well, it does look like it's going to be a little bit scary at this point in time. And, I mean, how at this stage do you try and fight against this? It, it feels like Complexity are content to just try and five-man and continue to take these towers. Do you think that there's going to be a whole lot that they stop for? Do they maybe wait for the next Roshan to really make their next move? Or, or can they keep the, their foot on the pedal? Well, right now there is no Ags on the Lina, so I still feel like the Eternal MVBKB means a lot. Uh, if he does end up coming to the fight, if they do get a full 5-5 five and five and MV gets to pop his BKB, gets to get some good value out of his Sunder, I still think Secret has some good fight potential because we've already seen the strength of that Dazzle plus Terrorblade, but we're going to maybe have to test that theory and out Void in the quick jump out. So, yeah, I just feel like right now, up to this point, Secret has been playing 4v5. Now they have a fifth hero that can opt to engage. Well, time will tell if they're going to be able to make enough of that as... It looks like, at least for now, Complexity is going to back on out. Not everybody is with them, and this is something that I kind of like. Oftentimes when you end up getting into these situations where you go around the map as five, it's still difficult to find your farm, but they're actually going to smoke on up again and see if they can catch somebody off in the jungle. I don't expect them to see anybody, or looking for Roshan, who is not quite up, but will be very shortly. Uh, every moment that goes by, though, I have a feeling that Secret knows something might be afoot. Oh god, we walking up onto high ground? Mm, oh, but Hotskin's the vulnerable hero. He's not gonna have any response from him, but can they bait a big enough chrono? I don't think so. Yeah. Just really good positioning there by Secret to avoid that uh, potentially disastrous team fight. And they're gonna walk right on in as Roche is there, soaking up some damage with the Terrorblade Illusions. Or, uh, they're not gonna go for it actually. I, I, do you think that they have the capabilities of taking it themselves, or is it too dangerous with the Chronosphere? 
I mean, capability, yes, but it's not something they're going to look to do anytime soon. They just want the towers. Like, they have this entire bottom lane to push through. If they have the advantage, they're going to take that there. Illusions well, continuing to take them on down. Blink daggers all around. Um, I think almost. Uh, they're getting a lot of blink daggers in this game, and. Um, it feels like the follow-up of any fight is going to be very, very intense. And um, I, I always feel like whenever there's sort of those those opportunities to to get in the midst of a fight and and try and uh, try and chase somebody down, um, do you think that four staffs might be a better option, or who do you think is going to be the aggressor? Is it really just going to come down positioning? I mean, it's always come down to positioning. The, the jumping, the Chrono Spear, the, the Yule Scepter, just locking somebody in place so you, they know what to do. Uh, we're relying heavily on the Venge swap, which Venge just hit level 11, so Pilot Eye should be able to, to create some value there. It, it's always been the positioning for Secret. Whether or not they can mitigate the effects of the Chrono Spear so that they can actually take a full engagement. Yeah. Fortunately, so it's not able to catch out Weeha there as he went the other direction and now pressure down on this bottom tier two tower it looks like for the moment at least secret is going to be trying to push out this top lane and see if they can make a tower trade uh but swindle is sitting there guarding the guarding the way forward making sure that if anybody walks up they have the danger of getting chrono sphered certainly so two two but the big thing you have to note is that eternal levy is not actually getting counter push in right now he did no structural damage received during the entire time complexity we're forcing bottom lane and and that shows a little bit of hesitance here from secret um obviously they want to use this 10 second bkb offensively not defensively but in general and it doesn't seem like he's getting the counter pressure that he needs right now well it, i think it's it's pretty scary to be able to go against like we were talking about you know the blink yules combo coming out from the invoker if he does get caught out like he has to stay alive there's no way for them to really win if he uh, starts getting picked off so I can kind of understand a little bit and obviously if you hit that combo absolutely perfectly there isn't an opportunity for you to get your BKB off all right so eternal envy is going to go for a blink dagger here on terrorblade we've seen it on a lot of different heroes but terrorblade is definitely a, a unique choice in this case it is going to be attempting to blink dodge chronospheres if the if he does get caught for example by the yules combo you're talking about then then should be sitting behind him to swap him out. He has to wait three seconds and then blink, get CP home to safety and make it so that her, her sacrifice was not in vain. So all in all, I actually think this pickup can be very powerful, but next item has to be big. Next item is definitely 4K plus in cost. Hmm. Let's see if he's going to be able to get that up in time. Is there anything in particular that you really favor here? Uh, butterfly potentially, or does he... I think Scotty. It has to be. Like, the, the HP value is still way too important. I mean, Butterfly is definitely an option, but oh, we're going to see Swindle come jump pretty back. hard here. Time walk is available, and he will get it off. He's still taking a lot of damage to the reflections. Oh, He's no still back. able to get the kill. Ridiculous amount of damage coming out, and they're going to be able to kill off a couple of these birds also, and now Eternal Envy is just up front and center. going to start tearing Whoa. down this tier 2 tower. Uh, not really anything that they can do to stop this at this point. He just deals so much damage in that... Uh, Metamorphosis form and I, I don't even know why you glyph to be honest like at this point you have a face of void down for 40 seconds There is no team fight. There mm. is nothing for complexity right now and secret know it So just getting that quick jump in and uh, the fact that there is no saving potential right now for the side of complex They have the blink no ball for Z freak, but no they had no good targets for it the void would die out of the case so it's just, it's an awkward position because, the, of course, the lack of mechanism on their team as a whole. So what do you think Complexity needs to do? I feel like we're, even though they're in the lead in terms of net worth, Secret are kind of exerting their will against them. Do you think that they need to do something to try and keep the pressure up? Or uh, is there any point where we sort of get into, um, like, a, a, a point of no return? I mean, yes, there is a critical mass on the Terror Blade. The Dark Seer can get another two big items, and he can be extremely scary too. But all in all, he's still got the face forward. He just picked up his axe. This is a 60-second Scepter cooldown, a 5-second duration. I still feel like Complexity just keep doing what they've been doing, which is uh, to use the Chronosphere uh, whenever it's opportune, and then take objectives around that. Hmm. Diffusal Blade has been picked up at this point by Terror Blade, so... We'll be slowing those people down, taking care of all those buffs that they receive, and 
Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't take mm. off Cold Snap, which would be pretty cool. I think the uh, thing is uh, dispelling time dilation off of allies. Uh, if he can get it, like, for example, off a of puppy, and he can get another grave off in a fight, that's huge. How important is the mana burn damage? It's relevant, but, I mean, it's still not, like, the reason to pick it up. Okay. Well... 1600 net worth on him, Invoker ever so slightly behind, and it looks like Complexity is going to be content to start pushing this out. They ping out that Swindles is over in the trees. That was not quite sneaky enough, and now they're going to jump forward, rolling over oh. to catch on him immediately. That's going to be a pretty big decision. They are going to be able to kill off in the meantime the Dazzle, but meanwhile, the Faceless Void goes down, and all of a sudden, they're in a lot of trouble. Icewall does get thrown out. Hanskin is going to end up dying. They jump again onto Wii, and Chessie is going to end up going down here. Terrorblade right clicking away. Um, my goodness gracious, is he still? Alive there. Swap back the other direction. Z Freak's gonna be okay. Limp is gonna be able to take out the eventual spirit end, but Chessie looks to just be walking. A two for yep. two trade in a messy team fight. Lucky timing for Chessie, honestly. If you look at the Roche timer, it is about eight, ten seconds past the Aegis expiration. Chessie gets to get the value of the Aegis within like the last four or five seconds it was going to exist in this world. So, very fortunate Chessie just doesn't straight up die there. But even still great for Secret to find that pickup. Uh, again, the Void is the target you have to find if these fights are gonna to play out the way you want them to, and they do it once again. I figured once is probably the only time Swindle's gonna allow it, but yet again, Swindle gets caught out, and that is gonna be Secret taking a, a big swing forward. Yeah, they had to search the second BKB, and it was only an even trade here north of the Aegis but it's still a secret that are getting control of their map back. Yeah. Well, and, you know, giving all this extra farming time, we were taking a look at the score in terms of the difference in net worth, and at 7,500, it's starting to feel like those numbers matter less and less with every team fight. And really what it's coming down to is structural damage, uh, the ability to take, objectors af take objectives after the fact, um, or at least, you know, just take map control back and that's what's happening right now in terms of the vision that we're seeing across the board secret have a pretty good hold on everything and meanwhile complexity have no wards on the map right now it has been a little bit of a struggle for them so at this stage now they've got to kind of get things under wraps here as far as smoke the seat they're waiting for it to cool down they've got one and a half minutes on that and uh, you mentioned the Observer Wards, they've got only one in stock right now, so they kind of have to find a way to either get some really sneaky Observers out, or to kill Weeha and take his gem, because right now that's giving Secret just a, a chokehold on the entire map. Absolutely. And you'd think that they'd be able to have a little bit better vision because of the birds, but we've also been seeing the oh, uh, no, secret no, no, no. If you say that, you have not played Visage. Those birds do nothing <laughs> in terms of giving you vision. Like, it's like a hawk that got both of his eyes blinded. Like, those guys are feeling around uh, worse than bats. I don't you know. know. Like, you know what, Blaze? You, you caught me. I, I don't play Visage. <laughs> no. You, you just check out Dire Vision occasionally when they're flying over trees. Those guys don't see for shit. It's, it's okay. awful. All right. Fair enough. Well, they're at least going to be able to fly around and, and hit some creeps, which is pretty helpful. Uh, Spindles at the, uh, the the full accompaniment of his core items. Um, one of the games I believe that we saw him ended up going for the Battle Fury build. Uh, what what are your options as far as a next item for Faceless Void? Do you just try and get tanky at this next stage or um, getting some more utility? Well, some voids like to go for damage at this point. Look at like the Daedalus and those kinds of options. Uh, if you're expecting a butterfly out on the terror plate, so an MKB wouldn't be bad. But we're gonna see Chessie engage. Yeah, big hit onto Weeha. Still the oh my god, the BKB comes out a little bit late, and the Blade Fairy did so much damage. Meanwhile, turn to Unvi just hitting away. Does get the snowball save though. Still going to be all right. Puppy ends up graving himself. Misery vacuum wall into three. Pretty nicely done there. The turn back around. Void on the back lines was able to chrono up Envy, but I'm not sure if he's going to be able to do enough damage. Chessie is yeah. running away from them, seeing if they can get out, and it looks like maybe Complexity have been able to turn the corner. We still running out of here. Rolling Fuller just barely getting away from the snowball, but no Z Freak is going to be able to chase him down. The gem is on the ground, and it looks like the only survivors are going to be Pylai Die and Eternal Envy. Man, everybody else gain array on nothing, though. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that uh, on paper, that Chronosphere doesn't look too spectacular. Obviously, no damage done to the Terrorblade himself in that Chrono, but they go ahead and they just use it as a placeholder. Just say, put a pin in it, five seconds, you can take your little time out, Envy, and we can go ahead and just ravage the back lines. The Earth Spirit uh, was their focus. They got to take him down, and of course, that 
is going to give complexity the gem back, which again was really important. That's what's been giving them so much difficulty in in getting this map control back and getting sight on just much whatever secret are trying to accomplish. So good fight for them. Uh, as far as next state progression for the Faceless Void you were asking about, I would not be surprised to see a Monkey King bar since you expect the butterfly from Envy. But I personally still love to go for tank and utility. Like you can go Octarine Core, you can go Refresher Orb, just more Chronosphere, man. <laughs> more Chrono all the time. Yeah, I mean, you're kind of set for damage in a certain way uh, if you're able to get all of the, the Invoker spells off. I guess BKB is still going to be an issue, but, you know, Limp does have his Aghanim Scepter. Uh, mm -hmm. Time will tell what's going to end up going, he's going to end up going for, but I, I think that really it depends on how you want to play it too. Um, if we sort of see them get those same type of chronos where they just hit Envy and then focus all the backline support, uh, then definitely going that utility route seems to be the, the better option uh, versus trying to sort of burst him down in the midst of a team fight. All right, so we are going to see the Illusion come in from the Terror Blade. They're going to get eyes on the Roche HP, and it looks like Secret are fully willing to contest this. But do they just weave the pit? Because if they do, they don't actually hit anybody with this negative armor, and that would be a loss. You really want to get value out of this weave, either defensively or to, to hit multiple heroes. And complexity? They're perching high on the cliff. They're really not in a position of commitment. Hmm. And it looks like with the smoke up there content at least for the moment just to watch and see what's going on but puppy uh -oh. the smoke does break this would be a big weave if he was able to get it yeah he but he's also in danger BKB, lift it on up that's going to be the sun strike going through the first time with the deafening blast and that's going to be enough for that first pickoff kill. <gasps> meanwhile the chronosphere gets hit on to three they're in a ton of trouble light strike array goes through everything being thrown out and they're in a ton of trouble vacuum wall though turning it back around onto four with the magnetized follow-up everybody is dropping incredibly low but already maybe the damage has been done swindle does able to go in for the time dilation as well as the time walk away he's dropping very low to the dual ion shell oh. is going to end up dropping only per person left alive is the invoker as my goodness gracious that dark seer play at the end misery it's been getting a little bit of flack this tournament he just really pulled one out there yeah that was the difference maker it, getting that wall vacuum off at the last moment getting his bkb out putting grips everything just hitting all the panic buttons doing everything he could to shift that fight's momentum massive wall vacuum major damage for the magnetized the earth spirit ended up doing more damage than envy he did 2300 damage there so it was all about that setup all about the vac wall if he had not lived to get that off then i feel that all it is is eternal envy just poking at people he might get one kill but his entire team gets wiped out but by just by the skin of his teeth by maybe even the guardian grieves aura misery survives long enough to use his greaves bkb and all the spells and that makes all the difference complexity get wiped and of course the Roshan now fires secret, both with Cheese on the Darkseer and the Aegis on Envy. Absolutely, and this might be that turning point that we were talking about. <laughs> Still, we're looking at this graph. It's it's an advantage to complexity, but you can see that curve right there. It is uh, no small feat indeed, and we also now with the Blink Decker and almost everybody in the game has been picking one of these ones up. Um, I, I think that Puppy, I mean, that's also without, I think Puppy getting even a spell off? Did he even get Weave out? I'm not exactly no, sure. No, no, he couldn't even grave himself. He just yeah. he just got jumped on immediately. There was actually a play where the LSA came out, and then the Yules from the Invoker, and, but it doesn't matter. They deafened it, and that made the Dazzle go down quick. So, yeah, obviously, if you have the thing last, then for the other heroes, maybe you kill the Darkseer right before he gets everything off. I mean, that I, I'm trying to marginalize the, the misplay with the fact that they could have stunned him the LSA, but mm -hmm. in the end, every spell counts. I mean, that definitely was completely getting the engage jump they wanted, getting a hero that wasn't going to get swapped out in time, but... Uh, secret still getting bigger and bigger and bigger. The Scotty is up, and I mean, if Void at this point just goes for maybe like a Maelstrom and a Mjolnir, maybe he's going to be able to counter push. But in general, these illusions are just so tanky and, and so difficult to deal with. Yeah. Well, the vision going to be gotten ever so slightly. This is Eternal Envy right up front and center. Need to blink away before he ends up getting taken out. The long range stun almost there, but Hamskin is going to be the one that's separated from the herd. 
throws on out that grave chill to the illusion. When illusions are hitting you that hard, when illusions are taking that long to kill off, this mm -hmm. is really terrible. It's time to shine. 2400 HP and not a, not a thing to look back on right now. They're setting up for possibly a big Chronosphere. They get the first stun off. Wave of Terror through onto the creeps. I'm just waiting for their moment to jump forward and make this happen. Uh, Pilot is in a really good position though. Even without Ether Lens, you know that he's going to be in swap range, but not inside the Chronosphere, even if just narrowly. So, and he's actually going to be taking a big chunk of damage here, but they're going to try to combo on him. Just pops the BKB and keeps walking, looking for that oh Sunder. <laughs> this terrifying gets the Sunder oh, turned back around. He was able to stay alive through it. It's going to throw out the stun that limp is on the top of by Weeha. The Eternal Envy still staying alive, going to be able to do a lot of damage. Magnetize is out. Jesse is going to start to fall so quickly though. Nice swap to make sure that they're able to secure the kill. Handskin now is going to turn back around. Almost able to kill him, but look at the damage. They end up popping the Aegis, but meanwhile, he's already gone oh, back. Oh, no. They throw out the ice shards to keep him in place, but honestly, this might be the moment where he just starts turning around and going ham. Throwback, big vacuum wall a second time through. Misery making it happen. They're going to be able to catch all the heroes on Snowball huh. save again. Can't find a kill. It looks like Limp's going to end up going down. Eternal Envy is just too manly right now, and there's Swell's trying to run out again. Everybody from complexity is going down and it looks like so too will the tier three tower dodges the tornado oh my goodness and I, that was part of what made the difference the fact the chronosphere is used when the aegis was recently it didn't staple him at all it just disabled the two counterparts next to him and they didn't get anything against windows it's a little time dilation off but it's not going to be stopping them from taking the top lane of barracks and at this point uh, i'm not sure if they dare even worried about leaving like they can just retreat cleanly uh, there's no real follow through chessy has four wex but they're not going to be seeing the tornado uh, right now complexity are still scared and they have just lost their top lane they can't get any counter kills against secret envy is massive and i just don't know if there's even much of a response i gotta bring it back to that sunder though that first life from envy it could have been almost a nearly wasted aegis but and even the grave but the Sunder barely got the range it needed to get the swap off, and it was uh, pretty hilarious. Swindles immediately tried to time walk that away, but the mechanic is, it's not damage received. It is literally just your health percent, my health percent. It, you, it doesn't stop by Ice Blast, it doesn't get oh. time walked back. And that's unfortunate for Swindles, as he was able to contribute so little to the fight as a result. My goodness, that is so frustrating, and... Well, the Sunder seems like it's uh, a pretty good ability as we have the yeah. Vanguard picked up by the Dazzle. Um, I'm assuming this is going to be built mm. eventually into a... a is this going to be trying to go to the Crimson Guard, or what are your thoughts here? Just extra money? No, it's it's good for a support that's already too squishy, and okay. I think that he's... It's really good against Familiars in particular. The Visage Familiars, the Forge Spirits, those things actually suffer dramatically from damage blocks, so the Crimson Guard is going to be a good... I would say you would have wanted it earlier, but this is, of course, your five position dazzle uh, at only 6k net worth. So he'll get it whenever he can. Puppy Crimson Guard should help, but we're going to oh. see that massive swap back and just the, as much as the void can do to try to get out of here. Blink, he has to even chrono. Going to try to go for the blink. The wave pair keeps it on cooldown. He keeps getting hit, and oh. I don't think he's going to get out. Oh, the swap again, and Swindles will be going down. He has buyback. And you are asking where his money was going to go. Well, it's going to go to the Crypt Keeper here. So, all right. Pile Dai swaps him back. They turn him into stone. They kick him back. He has to chrono. Pile Dai swaps him again. He's just getting thrown all over the map right now. This is uh, <laughs> this is such a frustrating game, I would imagine, at this point for the uh, the Void. Thankfully, he has got Chronosphere back up in another 23 seconds. So possibly going to be able to get back up in time. Do you think that it's going to be enough, though? Do they have the damage? I mean, they're going to have to try. This is their final stand. This is their midnight hour. But one swap could immediately just destroy any plans they have for a defense. They've got three familiars to work with. And Secret don't have enough incentive to push right now. They're just going to go ahead and wait for another Aegis. 
Because we saw what they could do with the first one. It's bring the, the Terror Blade low without heavy risk, and then get to play around with Sunder a little bit. Where normally Sunder is a last ditch ability, they actually can use it as a practically an initiation tool. They have the Aegis on top of it. The only thing that would add to the combo, we've been seeing the Grave and the walk in Sunder, I would say Surge as well. If you Surge mm. and Grave a Terror Blade, he's running at you with 10% <laughs> HP. This guy is just gonna take your soul away. <laughs> Absolutely he is devastating to fight against and we do have the fully completed crimson guard up on the dazzle uh, As well as the gem so making sure that that doesn't end up getting taken away again You just got to say that the, the way that this game was looking complexity felt like they were in the lead for so long it's been a 15,000 gold lead change and right around the same amount of experience uh, item eyes were starting to build towards a butterfly for terrorblade and once that starts coming out the plus side i, I want to say for complexity is that a lot of their damage is by virtue of their spells and the right clicks i think matter a little bit less if you get sort of the full combos off but i'm, I'm really wondering if they actually even literally have enough damage to kill them off I, i'm not sure hmm I mean, with everything, you you look at like the math on the full meteor sunstrike deafening blast combo. If you hit it perfectly, it, it's still something that can pretty much kill almost any carry. Like I think it could do uh, with the with the Agonim scepter and everything, like almost right. 1,500 damage. I, I haven't done the math recently as they've made so many upgrades to to all those effects. But it's a massive damage pool. Follow that up with your soul assumption, etc. Yeah, you certainly have the kill potential. Hell, they've got a Alina with an Aghanim's Laguna, nerfed as it may be. <laughs> that's still like one of the strongest nukes in the entire game. Yeah, that's true. Most definitely. Well, Weeha, the uh, the rolling ward on the four second cooldown. Um, definitely a very, very good spell as they're going to be trying to take on out that uh, the sigil. They do end up being able to see that Roshan has not as of yet respond. Hanskin does have the Solar Crest and the Aghanim Scepter. Also worth noting the Venge uh, Aghanim Scepter swap is going to be increased to that mm. very, very low cooldown. Uh, definitely, it, it can be pretty relevant. You're able to swap away, you know... Uh, the creeps as well to make your way away from people but um eternal envy going further forward he wants to fight god he's yeah. just not afraid there's nothing to be afraid of you got the grave behind you you're massive you are as the most farmed here on the map by far they're going to try to make the jump here onto lena but the swap back makes tusk an easy kill and as well yeah, and they're going to jump further forward here. Now Tusk buys back into the game. Swindles is just going to try and hit away here. But what is he honestly even going to do? Brought down to about half HP. The second Meeple is going to come through. Meeple is rolling still. Puppy is out there. They're oh my god, that's so over. amazing. Oh, Eternal Envy. What a freaking player. Lena has to buy back a second time now as they're going to continue to chase on over here. Shards go out onto Wee, but what are you going to do? Honestly, Chessie is starting to fall now from the right clicks. Oh. Eternal Envy. Magic missiles abound, and it looks like after... After that triple kill it might just be about over swindles jumps back a second time swap on the limp he's gonna end up going down does get the yule scepter to try and stay alive but to an end oh nice snowball save but is it gonna be enough i am not exactly sure he's on the low ground back is it gonna be rampage yes. oh rampage eternal envy taking them all out gg well played ends up getting called as secret are going to not only move on but stay out of that lower bracket for now of course, they're very happy to be able to take this victory, feeling a lot more confident in just their team play. You saw so many opportunities where they could really manipulate the, the flow of battle with like the swaps and engagements. You talked about the control they brought with the Stone Remnant. But did you actually see that Weehaw play in the middle of that fight? Actually, while Envy is taking massive damage, gets hit by the Laguna, is stuck at 20% HP, they enchant him, he kicks him into the Lena, and... <laughs>